Before we get started on my conversation with Gene Chatsky as part of the Alliance for Lifetime Income, a conversation we had on Facebook, what I thought to do is to mention to you, don't forget about GH2 Unfiltered. The Medicare ABCs for 2022 will occur on October 2nd. For first-time subscribers, you get a free copy of Maximize Your Medicare. I'll send it anywhere in the 48 states. When it comes to the conversation that I had with Gene, big thank you to her and the Alliance for Lifetime Income. You know, one of the things that you can tell, I can always tell this, which is that I appear on public in you know interviews and on the radio, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you know, frequently. And Jean distinguished herself but by not only being super nice, but in addition to that, we didn't have a set of scripted questions. We just kind of let it go to where it would take us. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> One more. I always forget. Inside the link below the video or in the broadcast, there's the link to the Maximize Your Medicare newsletter. The fact of the matter is that I appear in so many different places and there are so many different types of news bites and little th pieces of information that it's hard to kind of get them all together into one spot. The Maximize Your Medicare newsletter is free. It gets sent to you once a week and you can then pick and choose amongst all of the different resources and little bits of information that I'm providing. Again, that's the Maximize Your Medicare newsletter. Now on to the show. Welcome to Your Money Map, sponsored by the Alliance for Lifetime Income. I'm your host, Jean Chatsky. Very glad to have you along with me today, and especially glad because we are going to dig into a topic that I haven't had the pleasure of digging into all that much, um, and I was surprised at how much I had to learn in a pre-interview with our guest yesterday about Medicare. I have been a personal finance reporter now for 30 years. I've definitely written about Medicare, but the claiming strategies, the nuances, the amount of preparation that needs to go into it, and the intersection between your financial life and your health life are all things that we all need to be thinking a whole lot more about. That became very clear to me very quickly. My guest today is Jay O, and let me tell you just a little bit about him. Jay is multi-credentialed. He's an MBA, a CFP, a CLU, which is a chartered life underwriter and a chartered financial consultant. He is a licensed insurance producer in multiple states. He's a nationally recognized expert on Medicare, and you have undoubtedly seen him on CNBC, on other channels, as well as read his wisdom in USA Today and, and the Wall Street Journal and many other places like that. And he's got a top selling book on Medicare. It's called Maximize Your Medicare, Understanding Medicare, Protecting Your Health and Minimizing Costs. Jay, welcome. Thank you so much for being with me here today. It's my privilege, Jean. Thanks for having me today. Of course. So I was surprised at 
all of the knowledge that I walked away with yesterday. But as we launch into this conversation, and as always, I want to invite our listeners who are with us on Facebook, on LinkedIn, to join us with your questions, because there is nobody better than Jay to answer them on this topic. I I was surprised at the amount of time that you said people should give themselves to prepare for taking Medicare. You said it's a, a good number of years. Can, can we start there? Tell us how somebody needs to think about Medicare and incorporating Medicare into their life. And when does this sort of an education need to begin? So it's very common that people consider well, I'm turning 64 and I'm gonna be turning 65 next year. Now I'll try to think about Medicare. And then they go to YouTube or they, hopefully they watch your channel, hopefully they read a book, watch a commercial. The reality is, is that my recommendation is that people begin more just over two years prior to the first person in the household turning 65. And the reason uh, I, may put it in that way is because now Medicare premiums, both for part B part D, and for part D are indexed to your household income. This requires income planning, financial planning topics, because you can understand that there are, there are so much fragmented information, financial information in the world to say there's this particular strategy for reducing taxes or for, for example, let's just take Roth conversion. Mm -hmm. Very logical understanding the rationale for doing so. That all said, it also increases your earned income for that year. So, So basically what you're saying is that we really need to think about Medicare planning and healthcare planning as part of our overall financial and investment planning. I'd be even stronger than that, Jean, which is that, for example, our financial planning clients, we don't pass go until I'm clear on precisely what the health situation is and what the healthcare cost planning is. It affects not only just the dollar figure, but it entirely changes the time horizon that someone will be considering for their retirement planning, for example. Mr. Perfect, never sick, never been to the doctor, no medications, has a very different outlook than someone with a deep family history, long family history of illness, for example, or they themselves may have had a recent history. That changes every aspect of every claiming planning, portfolio strategy, et cetera. That becomes with health. And then, of course, there's the cost on day one. So where do you begin? And and as part of this conversation on where you begin, and, and Keith, welcome. Thank you so much for your question. I'm definitely going to get to that one in just a few minutes. But where do, where do we begin in this, in this planning roadmap? And as you go through the answer, because we haven't talked about Medicare before on this program, if you could define parts A, B, C, and D, that would be really helpful. So, and I don't want to leave you with the idea or the audience that this is a negative because you can see hysteria in the world where you see infographic that says, I need $6 trillion to save for healthcare costs, you know, during retirement. The reality is, is Medicare is an excellent chassis to a car. Excellent. There are large parts, enrollments complicated. I'll just touch on the highlights. Crazy people write books to talk about it. <laughs> part A, part A is does not cost anything because you most persons have qualified as a result of paying income taxes. Part, but that is hospitalization. Part B is about the services outside of the hospital, MRI durable medical equipment, blood work that your primary care physician may charge. That is a structure that people understand. 
it has a premium, and that's what I, we were talking about a few moments ago. The premium is indexed to your income two years prior. That's why, not coincidentally, I suggested just over two years prior do you consider this. And then there's standalone prescription plans, which are Part D, and though it's a la carte. So Medicare is, the difficult thing about Medicare is that the language looks similar to the ones that, to health insurance that you may have bought privately or been provided, sponsored from your employer. Medicare works differently, even if the terminology looks the same. I cannot say that slowly or more frequently enough. It works differently. So the ripple effects here are incredible. Oh, can you, when you say it works differently, are you saying it works differently because you have to buy from all of these buckets? Is that, it, is that the big difference? And it, it, that is part of it, but that's only part of it. Yeah, so you can see what happens. You're absolutely right, Jean. Your, your point is perfect, which is that this is just strange that you're having to deal with these things a la carte. But in addition, for example, under Part A, when you go to the hospital, if you're admitted into a hospital, you see a number that says deductible. So most persons just gloss over it. They think deductible means, okay, well, once a year you have this deductible. Under Medicare, the Part A, deduct Part A deductible is by benefit period. And again, innocent words you can gloss over easily. Benefit period is not calendar year. It's medical event. So now you can see what I'm saying. So you've got this complicated terminology deductible, for example. People don't know what that is, or they may have encountered it from their auto insurance. And they may have even seen it under health insurance. But under Medicare, the Part A deductible is not is fundamentally different from the way that the annual deductible works when you bought an ACA compliant plan off the marketplace. It's, it's different. So now you can see you're helping your someone in my age division, helping a senior mother, senior parent. You're trying to help them out because they're overwhelmed and you just gloss over the language because you haven't really understood and now... Right. Exactly. And, and there's a lot of language here. There's a, there's a lot of lingo. So, so if we, if we take, or we try to take a, 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 a broad view, mm -hmm. how do we think about these healthcare decisions when we're trying to plan financially for our retirements? How, how do we think about how much money we're going to need? Uh, will I be able to afford this? What sort of what sort of additions do I want for that chassis that you said is such a great chassis to begin with? So certainly the chassis, I am not, so I am not an alarmist. So you'll, you'll see alarmist headlines, Medicare trust fund running out of money. It'll be defunct or, you know, bankrupt by date X. The candid reality is that this is under government fiat control. I don't sit awake overnight thinking that all of a sudden we're going to defund Social Security and Medicare. That is not what I believe. That said, can you presume that Medicare premiums can increase through time at a rate higher than inflation? Unless there's an entire overhaul of the healthcare delivery system, I think that that is a safe assumption. That said, where I'm not as alarmist is that on top of the chassis are two large groups, Medicare Advantage, Medigap. Those are two large, fundamentally different ways of dealing with the ch what the chassis doesn't cover. That while the price is going to increase, maybe because as you age, your cost of out-of-pocket expenses, you will incur them, perhaps, depending on what you select. On the other hand, is the tremendous commercial competitive pressure on the carriers. And I can't stress this enough either, that literally, depending on where you live, for example, if you're in the middle of Iowa, 
and you are turning 65, the Medigap market will allow the Rolls Royce, the highest quality of plans, three to five dollars a month difference in premium at most. I've seen literally price ties and on Medigap. That's how competitive it is. Uh, the regulations and rules are entirely in the buyer's favor if you understand how Medicare works. Okay. So basically what you're saying, and let me just welcome everybody who has who has joined us. I'm talking with J.O. We're talking about Medicare and the role that your health care expenses and planning for health care needs to play in your retirement. If you have questions about Medicare, um, please join us in the comments section and ask them there. We'd be we'd be glad to have you. And let me say hi to everybody who's joined us already. Um, you're talking, Jay, and, and I love that you said that you're not an alarmist, that you believe that Medicare will be with us for the long haul. I personally believe the same about Social Security. I think the government has shown that they will step up and they'll do what they need to to keep these programs in place, largely in place, but perhaps with some cost increases or in the case of Social Security, some pullbacks that mean that we have to really step up and plan for our own futures. Part A is hospitalization. Everybody gets that. Nobody needs to pay for it in general, as long as you've in got general. a working record that supports it. But when right. it comes to part B, where people are asked to make a choice, and it's, it's a complicated choice between a Medicare Advantage plan and Medigap. And, and both of those provide for the extras that Medicare doesn't pay for in different ways. Can you, can you explain what's the difference between Medigap and Medicare Advantage? Sure. And before we get to that, so there are two lines on the federal Medicare card. Part A comes, like I said, like you rightly point out, premium free. Part B, you must purchase from the federal government in order to qualify for either Medicare Advantage or Medigap. So both of those components of this chassis, part A and part B must be in place prior to be eligible for Medicare Advantage or Medigap. Okay. Now, directly to your question about Medigap, the difference in, between Medicare and Medicare Advantage, I just spoke literally an hour ago to uh, the State Bar of Michigan. I describe it to everyone as very simply Medigap, Medicare Supplement, Medicare Supplemental, those are standardized plans, standardized, meaning that Gene's Insurance Company, Jay's Insurance Company, if we're offering Medigap Plan N, they're identical. They're exactly comparable down to the comma. They're not kind of, sort of, sim they are precisely similar, precisely. It, now, you said Medigare Plan Medicare, Medigap plan yep. N, right. are there different Medigap plans? Yes, there are letters A through N. And so some plans are not available now as this time has evolved and Medicare has evolved. Okay. But as it currently stands, there are Medigap plans A through N. And like I said, some letters have been eliminated at this point. Okay, and so are you? You're shopping for different packages of benefits with those different letters, essentially. That is correct, and they and so, but within there, for example, let's say a Medigap plan covers the inpatient hospitalization deductible that we spoke about earlier. That the way that Gene's company plan and and Jay's company plan and work will be identical. They must be identical. Otherwise, we're, we're not authorized to sell these plans. All right. So that's a bucket of benefits that you can basically understand will be with you as long as you continue to pay your premiums, correct? Exactly right. And that's a great way of describing it. And the short story is the only one that can cancel is you. So what's the difference between that and Medicare Advantage? You see Medicare Advantage advertised a lot on television. Yes. Most of the 
call this 1-800 number to see if you get the extra qualify for extra benefits. Uh, it's generally about Medicare Advantage. Medicare Advantage are privately administered plans by insurance companies. So the key feature for me that mentioned in a, in a book that I happen to have you know, written is that this, you must understand this to be annual contract. That means all of the moving details are subject to change every year. Deductible, premium, out-of-pocket maximum, formulary, copay, all of it. Every detail is subject to change. I think many people are used to that from their health insurance before Medicare, right? My, my policy changes um, many years. There are significant changes. True. Uh, and that is absolutely going to continue. And I don't want to be alarmist about this either, because the reality is because of the competition that I, did, that I described earlier, that the, the net result has been that premiums have declined, out-of-pockets have declined, out-of-pocket maximums have declined, and benefits have improved. On both Medigap and Medicare Advantage? On Medicare Advantage, because remember, Medigap, once you purchase, it doesn't change, period. That okay, said, so, so let me take a step back. How does somebody sure. decide if they should be going with Medigap or Medicare Advantage? So it will depend on a person's combination of health and financial facts, a very individualized private decision. Could you give us a couple of examples? Sure. So if, for example, if somebody has is a type 1 diabetic, type 1 diabetic with a long list of insulin and other complicating factors, the, real, the reality to them, the practical reality to that person is that they're going to have to monitor their health situation aggressively. They have to go to the doctor a lot. They have to have testing a lot. They have to continue to have testing equipment much and then other and then even in that instance you can have health complications your probability of incurring high frequent health care cost is high during that for that person in general you could defend medigap why because even though the premium is higher the coverage once you start to use it, the cost of it is almost zero for healthcare services after you meet the Part B deductible, which is only two hundred plus dollars, two just over two hundred dollars for twenty twenty one. That same person for Medicare Advantage, they will get out of pocket cost for every service. Now, again, this is not necessarily negative because the quality of those services and the price points are improving in the buyer's favor, the consumer's favor as we speak. Nevertheless, this is a bit unsettling and to persons because the carrier gets to determine the price. They're going to reshuffle the deck every year. So there's an example. Somebody also, let's just say someone with incurable disease, the issue here is the ability to switch is limited after a particular time frame. What do you mean? It means that if you start at Medigap, you can switch without restriction during the annual election period, which begins on any October 15th. Switch to Medicare Advantage? Correct. Okay. However, if your starting point is Medicare Advantage, you may not have the right to switch to Medigap because the seller, the Medigap insurance company, has the right to ask questions about your medical history and medical facts. So let me just make sure I'm clear on this because I think it's an important distinction. Sure. When you are first enrolling in these plans, when you're 65 and you're enrolling in Medicare and you're making the initial decision about Medicare Advantage versus Medigap, 
a Medigap insurance carrier is not going to check your health records. They, they, have to, they have to take you. Correct. But if you wait and you go on Medicare Advantage and then you try to switch into Medigap, they can check your health records and they may turn you down. That is correct. Okay. All right. And for the third attempt, this is all important. Sure. Yeah. Hey, these are these are very very detailed questions, but I think that they're they're all incredibly important, and and people don't pay enough attention. Um, in, in terms of the out of pocket cost for people, and then we'll move on. We'll move on to the the broader picture. The out of cost po out of pocket cost for people is going to be greater in general um, if you go with. Medigap, correct, rather than Medicare Advantage, or not so much? Not so it, It's without, in the absence of a crystal ball, let's just tell you how it works. So under Medi, Medigap, you are responsible for the Part B deductible, like I said, which is an annual deductible, $205, and $203 in this year. And it will increase, the government is able to change that portion but once you met it meet it in a calendar year you can literally go to the doctor every single day for zero on that same person under medicare advantage the reason i hesitate to not give you kind of like just one answer is let's say you went to the primary you had a medicare advantage plan first of all the premium is almost in many, many cases throughout the country, $0 a month. Medigap is going to be at least $100 a month. And I know I'm making overgeneralizations, but for the audience's knowledge, to give you an idea, 65 years old, low $100 a month. Well, Medicare Advantage costs zero. So let's say he needs to, he or she needs to go to the doctor once a week even, which is aggressive, right? But it goes to primary care physician. I can't tell because the primary care physician copay may be zero. Right. But it may be 20 bucks. And if you go enough times to hit the deductible, then 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 the math no longer it's, works. And then you have a test and then you've got some other type of service. You're going to get a separate bill for each one of these line items, possibly. So I know we're speaking in generalizations, but what it sounds like to me is that if you have chronic conditions, if you know that you are going to go to the doctor, um, it, a Medigap policy, if you can afford it, may make more sense than going with a Medicare Advantage policy. I think you've said it when you paused, if you can afford it. And right. especially at the beginning. And the reason I say that is that when you're first eligible for Medicare, if you start with Medigap and you decide for yourself, well, I'm Miss Perfect, I'm Gene, I never get sick and, <laughs> and things like that, hopefully, right? That what ends up happening is you decide, okay, I've now parted with $1,200 a year, $1,400 a year of premium. And my likelihood of requiring healthcare costs is low. And that $1,400 represented cost that you would pay for food. I didn't, I never suggest go in. Right. That said, for other persons where there are health issues that they face, they know, or, and some persons are just simply more risk averse. They don't like to deal with the moving parts and administration of receiving a letter from any insurance company for any reason. Well, Medigap is pretty clear. Your answer is zero after you've met the Part B deductible. So we've got different pressure points, different very private matters. This is also why you know, I spend this time with you and in, in public all the time, is that a good idea almost is certainly not to get your advice while mowing the lawn and stopping and talking to your neighbor who happens to seem, you know, financially savvy. The yeah. input, one input being different would entirely change the course. And the difference financially is thousands of dollars easily. Um, I have a, a, a good friend who started on Medicare this year. 
and feels like he's just gotten a big raise because yep. his out-of-pocket costs on Medicare are so much lower than right. they were on his employer's plan Absolutely. Um, through through the years, which is right. why I, I thought um, Keith's question, which we, he asked earlier in the conversation, and of course we invite you to ask all of your questions as well. Keith wonders if one day you envision the, the whole country having Medicare for all. No, I do not. So, and I, and I say that because, well, I'm not a political person or, or the Max Measure Medicare is not a book about partisanship or philosophy of government role in healthcare. That said, in order to do that, you would have to strip down right to the struts. Because for example, Gene, if you're, let's say you had an adult child who's aspired to be a doctor, you're talking about $500,000 of tuition. Yes. Plus the risk that they didn't make it. And then at the end, they're going to be paid at the compensated rate by the government at some common rate across it. That, that seems implausible. So until you drove down the underlying cost of health care, Frequently, I get dragged into this debate, and all pe people like to sling insults at me from every angle for all sorts of reasons. Some probably, some couldn't be justified, but people think that health insurance is the root of the issue. Health insurance is the calculated estimate of the benefits you receive based on underlying cost of healthcare. Let me put it in a very simple way. We do not determine the cost of raw oranges from the price of a gallon of Tropicana. It's the other way around. Right? So in other words, Right. I understand what you're saying. It's 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 everything else that goes into the mix. It's the mix. Right. So what ends up so to an, that's why I'm answering the question, do I see Medicare for all? The reason I don't is you would have to change all of the inputs for all of the costs on every component in our healthcare system, delivery system first. And then you could afford Medicare for all. This is why the comparison for me, and I know where we've veered away from, you know, the financial part. This is why. This is why for me to put it briefly, that the comparisons that I often read by other by people who I would call experts, when you are comparing to other countries, they are largely invalid. They don't have the same structures to become become medical doctors, for example. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, so let's let's actually veer back to, okay. <laughs> to the topic at hand. Sure. Um, we have health care costs that are going up at well above the rate of inflation that have been going up well above the rate of inflation for well over a decade. Right. As individuals who manage our own money and our mm -hmm. own economies to mm -hmm. the extent that we can. Sure. I'm all about controlling the things that you can control. So, so what can we do to bring our costs in line and what can we do to prepare ourselves for the costs that are coming our way down the road, including those Medicare premiums, which are not negligible? Sure. So for those persons who are not yet Medicare eligible, I think that many people have understood that the Affordable Care Act and the subsidies involved are notable. They have improved and been enhanced greatly as a result of the American Rescue Plan Act, the response to COVID by President Biden. That set of legislation notably improved the advanced premium tax credit Literally, there are persons in the high cost state, let's call it Florida, Texas, Arizona, where a 60 year old individual health insurance, $1,000 a month, went to zero overnight. 
Well, this is important because there are many people, and I'm sure some people who are listening, who either lost a job or left a job during COVID and lost their insurance as a result and have been wondering, you know, is my only choice to pay those expensive COBRA premiums? And what you're saying is that it's not. So depending on when they were let go and then, for example, their employment status changed, whether that be voluntary or involuntary, part of the American Rescue Plan Act was actually requiring employers to pay for the COBRA premium up to the end of September. If those are per, for those persons, they have another special period in which they can select an ACA compliant plan and see if they can get the advanced premium tax credit, which is again, back to the interaction of all these different topics that we started our conversation, Gene, which is that this is a tax matter, meaning that you've got household size and how much your household income is and where you live combining to see whether or not your health insurance premium can be notably lower. So essentially, how if you're trying to solve this problem for yourself, if you're trying to figure out what is, you know, we're headed into open enrollment season. If you're trying to figure out what is the most affordable way to get health care coverage for the next year, where would you send people? So we're going to come up for persons that are not Medicare eligible. That period will begin on November 1st. We're going to get a good look over the next couple of weeks at what the proposed rates are going to be and then what the proposed tax credits will look like. For example, my firm and other firms do as well. I'm not going to say it's only myself, but there are estimators. Your household size, your zip code, your anticipated household income. You can get estimates on how much this credit will be. So you're going to have a retail, a top line price. You're going to have a discount, an estimated discount, so that you can see what a possible net price to be for health insurance if you're not eligible for Medicare. Okay. What's the website for your Um, estimator so that people know where they can go in order to get this free calculation. And I'm going to ask Molly, who's producing, to listen and put it in the chat. Sure. So it's gh2, girl henry2, benefits.com. And gh2, it's gh squared, but no no problem, gh2, benefits.com. And in there is a sub, one of the menu selection is ACA insurance enrollment. And it doesn't, there's no obligation here. You're not inputting your name or anything. You're lit. You can and just get emails so that you can get a copy of what you're seeing. But generally speaking, this is a very good stopping point. There are limits to every technology platform. There are certain states that run their own exchange. And for that, a little bit more difficult because you have to get different estimators. But the tools do exist online, at least to get an idea, a feel for what is possible. Now, I guess, Gene, part of this, and as some of my own commentators or people have commentated on my public speaking, which is that, Jay, your hopefully your clarity is, I feel like I can do it myself. I. I would never ever say that I don't write that in maximize your Medicare. Okay. okay. I'm giving persons very good principles. I love today's conversation, right? Because you're asking the, just the questions that people should ask. That is wholly different from actually crossing the finish line. I Better. totally, I totally get it. We've got a few more um, questions coming oh, in. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I, sure. And I want to make sure that we, we sure. get to them. Um, the first, um, Kathy, Kathleen is asking if this video will be repeated. It will, Kathleen, if you want to share it with your friends, we will push it out through my Facebook page. Um, the Alliance for Lifetime Income will push it out after the fact. I hope Jay will push it out as well on his social channels so you will be able to find it. Um, Cindy wants to know, what about Plan D for prescriptions between going GAP and Advantage? So under Medigap, you have to purchase Part D a la carte. 
the, in most locations, 30 plans in, in, are available. Your time to change those plans is October 15th through December 7th, coming up very, very soon. You should presume that you should change every year because of the intense competition. Part D prescriptions are, are also usually embedded inside Medicare Advantage. There are some exceptions, but the general base case rule is that 90% of Medicare Advantage plans, I want, and I'm probably low there, include embedded prescription plans, which qualify as Part D. Last thing about that is, it has been one of the points to show how sharp the pencils are by the sellers. That you would think, intuitively, it may be attractive to think, since I'm buying a la carte, the benefits will be better than the ones embedded inside of Medicare Advantage. That is not the case. You would have to actually check that what has happened here is the Medicare Advantage cares are highly motivated to highly motivated. And as a result, they have created packages of prescription drug benefits, which can in many cases be superior to those benefits of a standalone plan. Something that sounds pretty counterintuitive when you're thinking about just when you're shopping for something else. So, so let's actually wrap on that notion of shopping. Um, could you talk a little bit specifically about each bucket? How do I, if all the plans are consistent, all the, all the Medigap N plans are the same, how do I actually choose a carrier to provide that for me? And, and on the flip side, if, I, if I'm going with a Medicare Advantage plan, how do I shop and make sure I get the right one for me? Is it, is it about the drug formulary and making sure that the prescriptions that I take are on that formulary, or is it something else? So great question. Let's start with the Medigap one. So yes, the coverage is identical. The prices are not. Okay. Okay, that's first. So then you could ask yourself, okay, can I simply shop by price? The issue is for everyday consumer is that the prices are not transparent. And not only that, the publicly available resources to compare are not well updated. I happen to know where, the, where they are. When a client inquires with me directly, I'm not of the public. The average shopper, 64.9 years, I wanna buy Medigap Plan and I wanna buy Medigap Plan G. They can be wildly off. There's all sorts of different nuances there. In addition to that, there are nuances on other more complicated topics beyond today. Administration, underwriting standards, et cetera, et cetera. If, and this type of language is very complicated. And when someone approaches me, I might suggest carrier one versus carrier two based on not the language, because I know that's the same, but some other nuance. Like on Medicare Advantage. Nuances like what? Well, for example, if someone, I'm, I may be intentionally guiding someone to the to a particular group because they've come to me at 67 and want Medigap, but they have borderline health. I need to get them in. I want to have a higher probability of getting accepted. I said Jay and Jean's insurance company have the right to ask. I didn't say that Jay and Jean's company ask the same questions. Uh, I Jay and Jean have the same grading scale, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So basically, if I'm going to buy a Medigap policy, I really should be talking to somebody like you. I should be talking to an expert who deals with this all the time, which is what I tell people, by the way, about long-term care. If you're going to buy something, you should be buying with buying from somebody who does this every day. And ask, I, I would additionally ask, okay, what is the basis of, the, of that determination? Okay. It would have to be concrete and quite specific. On the Medicare Advantage side, how do you make that call? I always tell persons 
shouted through Maximize Your Medicare, you first need to understand network. The last thing you want is to go to a doctor and I don't take your plan. Because the premiums are is a tie. Price is a tie. So then the question becomes, yes, your medications, of course, and then are there extra reasons that you specifically, for example, you have very bad teeth. Well, certain, certain plans have very, very enhanced dental and access to even more enhanced dental as opposed to other Medicare Advantage plans. Some places you absolutely need to see a particular specialist and you absolutely don't want to go see your primary care physician first. Some plans allow this. Because the price is so competitive, that isn't the issue. You end up having to flip the rocks on a stone beach to say, okay, this are what drive my decisions so that I can find the plan most fitting. I don't want mean to be negative, Gene, because the reality is, is that once you get underneath the stone that you're that you seek, zero dollar premium capped out of pocket expenses at the time that you're most likely to be ill in the age of a pandemic is a security blanket well worth the time and effort that you use to identify it. Flip the rocks on a stone beach. That's going to be the phrase of the day. Um, Jay, we we are going to end it there. But boy, oh boy, um, what a conversation. Thank you for all of this in-depth information. I know that I asked a ton of questions, but I, I really appreciate the fact that you were patient and answered them all. Where can our um, viewers find more of you? The website for the book is Maximize Your, Maximize Your Medicare. I'll have a link or somewhere in the chat on your page there. There's a YouTube channel called Much More Than Medicare by J.O., where I'm addressing not only Medicare-specific matters, but very similar to what you've asked, Jean, which is that there's a timeline here as you prepare in any stage of life. The different price points and considerations are all over the map. That's what that channel is for to introduce, you know, financial fluency topics. And thank you so much for today. It's been my privilege. Other person, people that I know say, oh, I know Jean. I've seen her in, in this location <laughs> or that location. So I knew I, I knew I knew I had I was, you know, in the right spot and look very much forward to today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you to the Alliance for Lifetime Income for bringing us this discussion. Um, I hope to have you back again soon, Jay, and I hope to see all of you soon. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you.